So here's a quick uh, video on a very simplified uh, risk score for post-op nausea and vomiting uh, so that if your uh, attending staff asks you uh, why he or she is giving a particular anti nausea at a particular time, uh, you'll have uh, a bit of a basic understanding. So, uh, risk scoring will be based on four very simple properties that are essentially uh, yes or no. Um, and these are based on kind of major risk factors that have been identified for post-op nausea vomiting, which affects about affects between 20 and 30 percent of all surgical patients. So it's one of the most common uh, post-operative complaints of uh, surgical patients. So our very basic risk score is based first off the patient's gender. Um, if they're female, they get one point. Um, if they have a past history of PONV, that's also worth a point. If they are a non-smoker, that is worth a point. Um, and as well, if they are being given perioperative opioids. As any of us who have taken opioids know, uh, they can be very powerful uh, nausea inducers. So that's also worth a point. Um, so we add this up for a total of between 0 and 4. Um, now, if they have 0 to 1 for total score, don't even need to worry about prophylaxis. So you don't give them anything during the procedure. If they have two, you can use monotherapy. And if they have three or four, uh, you can use multi-therapy. Or even consider um, TIVA instead of a general anesthetic because uh, the volatile gas, um, whether it be desflurane or sevoflurane or even isoflurane, uh, can be very powerful uh, nausea inducers as well. Uh, so when we talk monotherapy or multiple therapy, the most common agents and the most common doses, um, so uh, probably the most common agent is uh, serotonin receptor antagonists. called on Dancitron, and that's uh, usually given in a 4 milligrams IV dose, um, about a uh, half hour prior to end of surgery. That's one option. Another option is corticosteroids. Uh, dexamethasone and that's usually given four to six milligrams IV at induction that's another option and then a third choice um, are there's dopamine antagonists that work in the chemoreceptor trigger zone uh, the most common one used for this purpose is droperidol now we could do a whole other video on uh, the tragic story of droperidol, um, uh, but we don't have time for that right now. For all intents and purposes, uh, it, is, it does have a black box warning for uh, prolonging the QT interval. Um, however, the evidence behind that is, uh, is not fantastic, um, but we don't need to get into that now. Uh, and it's typically given in, in a dose uh, of 0 0.625 to 1.25 milligrams IV and as well is given uh, like ondansetron towards the end of the case. Uh, so to summarize, uh, we have a very simple risk score based on the patient's gender, whether they have a past history of post-op nausea vomiting, whether they're a non if they're a non-smoker, and if they're being given post perioperative opioids. 
Uh, based on that risk score, you can decide to give them either no prophylaxis, monotherapy, or multiple therapy. You can even adjust uh, your, uh, your uh, type of anesthesia. Um, and if you are deciding to give anti-nauseates, um, there are uh, a number of options. Three of the most common uh, are ondansetron, uh, dexamethasone, and droperidol. Thanks for watching.